Today, we're going to be looking at a game played by the legend himself, Vishy Anand. The first Indian Grandmaster, 2800 plus, multiple time world champion. He was nicknamed the Lightning Kid uh, when he was young because of how fast he was. He'd play, basically he'd play classical games like they were rapid. And he's still got it. This guy is like 54 years old, pops off now and then in a tournament, and he's just like, he never left. I mean... It's just a good sight to see for anybody that wants to play chess for a long time, for anybody that took a break. Um, he put India on the map. India now has a stronghold on chess. They're fantastic. That India has a grip on the chess world for sure. And that's because of him. People looked up to him. They wanted to follow in his footsteps. And he's not this guy who hides all his prep, hides everything. He's actually the only old school player to be extremely good at preparing with computers. And he's just passing on his legacy to his fellow countrymen. So it's a beautiful thing to see. We're going to be looking at a game from 2023. So last year, quick math, against Wesley So. He has three brilliancies. He sacks a rook, a queen. He sacks about everything for a mate in 13. So an absolute legend. Let's get to the game. Enough intro, right? So we got e4, e6. Do you know what opening this is? That is the French. You control the center. They play e6 to get this pawn chain facing the queen side. And let's see how it pro progresses. Okay, knight to c3, very common. There's the exchange, there's the advanced. You could play it in like a tarash fashion with knight d2. You could play the board in a on move two. Many things. e5, okay, so this knight comes to f6. White gains space with a tempo. But the knight on d7 stands well because typically black wants to play c5. And the knight is well placed here guarding c5. So we get just that and then we get f4. Not the most critical line, but kind of a critical line, right? You don't like getting faced with f4 very early on. They can try to play f5 and destabilize your center very quickly. And I think the knight on f3 is less awkward with the pawn on f4. Kind of like how with the pawn on c4, the knight is less awkward with the knight on c3. That's how I feel about queen's pawn openings. That's why I don't play the jabava. Knight f3, well, there's many reasons I don't play the jabava, right? It's a subset of the London. So bishop to e3. This move kind of hints at the castling queen side, right? That typical battery prediction of the year. Pawn to a6. Black wants to expand on the queen side because their pawn chain faces the queen side. So typically they attack on the queen side. And all the more because white is castling queen side. We get take. Many book moves there. But um, exchanging in the center, removing some tension is one way to go about it. We get pawn to a3. Look at what this move does in the future. It doesn't look like much now, but just, just wait. Queen to f2. Now we have a battery facing this way, right? That's better than being blocked by a pawn because this is more of an open diagonal creating threats. Okay, b6. Maybe we're going to get a Fian Keto in a rotation over to the c, c file, but he, he gains a defender on the knight, which is much needed. Okay, we get castles. You can play more in a b4 setup, but I think you're prepped for castling and... Not so easy for, for black to attack white. Pretty easy for white to attack black, I would say. We got bishop to d3 and bishop to b7. So had this knight taken, which arguably was the best move, you see this knight can no longer pry away the rook from b4. Uh, a3 is a hook, so of course black is still going to go for this. He, he has problems in and of itself. But this rook on the third rank, you know, they say rook's on the third, good for attacking. Rook's on the second, good for defending. That holds true much of the time. But okay, Wesley did not go for this. Um, he went bishop to b7, clearing everything up. And now we get queen g3. Queen g3, I could speak. Uh, boop, boop, boop. e5. e5, he's trying to go f5. So he has two guardians on e5. And he's trying to break open the position, right? You don't go f4 to keep the pawn on f4. You go f4 to go f5 to destabilize black's only pawn chain. Pawn to f5, okay, he was scared of f5, he, graded, he gave it credit, so black plays f5, trying to close the position. King b1, right, guarding against all the holes, and then we got bishop takes knight. So you remove the knight, because now if b4 ever comes, there's knight a4, I'm sure there's more reasons, but that was one. Queen to h3, what is the point of this move? Well, you could see g4 blowing open the king side, knight g5 disallowing the king from going to f7, also threatening e6, the stronghold, uh, gluing all of black's pieces together, or pawn structure together, rather. And let me turn on so you see how many great moves he's about to play. Okay, 
So we got pawn to g6, as you can see, a mistake by Wesley, but not so clear what you, he does, right? If h6, you still go g4, and bad things will happen. So we get g6, and we get g4, right? That was all part of the plan. He can't really take, because after taking, there's many sacrifices, and I mean like many sacrifices, uh, open here on the g-file onto the king. So we get b4, but this was a miscalculation. You actually could take. And now it's not so clear. If they take this way, you can even throw in knight a4 to save a piece. And it's just GG's. I mean, black is going to get mated very, very easily. You have two rooks. So you sack one rook on the g1, and then you checkmate him. On the g1. Not on g1. On the g1. We get f takes g6, just prying open everything. Rook to e8. He doesn't want to get taken on e6. Uh, that's not checkmate in 1, right? We talked about they're going to be checkmate in 13. So we got rook g1. That is a brilliant move. That is a brilliant move. So he sacks the rook, takes with the other rook, and this is very, very scary. I mean, yeah, you're up a piece, but not really. Queen takes e6. I think that's brilliancy number two or three. What is the point of this move? Well, that was brilliancy number three. The point of this move is, what does black do? If rook takes, pawn takes, king h8, Rhymes with checkmate. And so that can't be taken. He opts for king f8. And now, okay, mate in 12 now. Pawn takes. And Wesley just resigns. So where is the mate? Well, you're, you're obviously threatening to do this. They can't really take that. Uh, so if rook takes, let's see. We get h8, queen. Better for them to go to e7 than f7. Because at least if they go to e7, they have rook to f7. But that doesn't matter so much. Rook g7, rook blocks, you could take. Now you get forked, but it's not about winning the rook. It's about a lot more than that. Queen to e7, we know that um, queens and knights make the best checkmating patterns, and let's see how he does this. So if he goes here, queen takes e6, wraps it up. If he goes here, you just go queen f7, knight takes rook, queen takes checkmate. So of course, Wesley resigned, but there was a mate in 12, and I'm sure he spotted it. At that point, it's just intuition. You don't even need to see it the whole way through, though he would have. So, a clean game by Vichy Anand, played in 2023. Thank you guys for watching, as always. Hope you enjoy, and have a great day.